What's going on YouTube? Got another knife review here for you. Today we're going to be looking at the Matt Diskin. Uh, this is the dual action fire. Um, I don't think the fire comes in any other format other than dual action. And what dual action basically means is that it's a manual folder, um, but also, as most of you all know, um, it's also a scale released uh, automatic knife, um, side release knife. So very smooth as a manual opener, but when you do just kind of release that scale right there, you can see as I push it up, then it just flies out. And there's a leaf spring uh, underneath the spine, <coughs> excuse me, spine of the blade that um, just jettisons that scale out. So, <clears throat> but you can see, you know, as a manual flipper, you know, no matter how I flip it with my middle finger or with my thumb or whatever, it's, I mean, just as fast. This knife is incredibly smooth. It's actually running on bearings, which is, I think in my opinion, pretty unique um, for an automatic. Um, you can see as well how smooth that knife is, you know, when that leaf spring is still engaged, um, you know, kind of just falls, it could not fall down, it's a pretty light blade, but on the bearings it's incredibly smooth, um, almost kind of like hydraulic but on bearings uh, smooth, um, and then when you do release it with that auto, again you can see that scale moving right there, um, then you have to re-engage that steel spring um, and push it down. Uh, Matt Diskin is kind of known as a expert CNC uh, machinist. I think he also um, was one of the primary um, sellers for lightning strike carbon fiber, if I'm not mistaken. I remember hearing about that or reading that a while back. But um, I mean, he doesn't seem like he releases that many knives um, out there. And... You know, he's kind of one of these quote unquote custom makers that flies under the radar. Um, but his stuff is really cool. Um, I have this knife as well as this Vulcan uh, flipper uh, from Matt Diskin. And Matt also uh, apparently is the co founder of a knife company called Vulcan Knives. Um, they don't really put out too many knives, they're more kind of um, almost like Kershaw. Uh, knives, you know, not like super high quality, um, but you know, uh, not 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 high quality, but um, they're not super expensive, you know. So, uh, and then you know, it has like G10 scales or um, I don't know, not FRN scales. I think they're just G10 scales and um, kind of basic run of the mill steel. Um, but anyway, you know, some of his higher end, again, like you would quote unquote custom work. You know, like this fire um, is pretty, I mean, I, honestly, is phenomenal. I've had this knife for, um, I think, over two years now. And, you know, obviously, it's not one that I want to give up um, because I think it's just such a great knife. You know, on, on it, you see it's uh, titanium. It's basically a titanium frame lock. I wouldn't consider this a liner lock. And it's got these onlay scales, again, that work as... Um, on the presentation side works as a the you know the the spring leaf release for the blade um, all the mechanisms are hidden underneath however this rotates I don't know you know because it has proprietary uh, proprietary hardware right there you'd need some kind of mini spanner um, to take that off and you know given that it's automatic I don't want to mess around uh, with it um, but yeah, it's got these onlays of lightning strike, textured lightning strike carbon fiber. And then it's got this steel deep carry clip, um, which makes it, I'll just mention it now, it does make it a little bit difficult to get in and out, not into the pocket, but out of the pocket. There's not much to grab, um, but it's not that big of a problem. Um, and then on the back, you've got this full length lightning strike carbon fiber backspacer. Um, to conceal that leaf spring underneath the spine. Um, for the blade, for I think everything that I've seen outside of the Damasteel or Damascus style blades, um, he uses LMAX. Uh, on the back of here you can see that big uh, LMAX print. Um, and then on the other side, the presentation side, he's got that Disc and Fire logo 
right there. You see how it just shimmers in the light. You can see the LED tubes right there on the ceiling. Um, you know how it just shimmers off that DLC coating. And Matt does uh, different grinds on his blades, whether they're compound grinds or triple grinds, um, or just a straight up uh, flat grind here. But just you know, a really really beautiful blade. Um, as an EDC. This is a pretty sweet blade. Um, it's a great, great slicer. Very, very sharp. And you can see how it ends on that really, really fine tip uh, right there. You know, if you were to compare that tip to, say, the Sebenza, you know, Sebenza's got quite a bit more of a stout tip than the Fire. So very, very fine edge um, on, uh, on the Fire. Um, and you know, really outside of that, uh, he's got, um, this long, you know, really, really long steel insert. Um, I don't want to say he was one of the first to incorporate that, but he was pretty early on, you know, to adopt this steel insert, if I recall correctly, because the fire has been out for quite some time. You can also see the long extended uh, steel lock bar on this titanium frame lock as well. You know, and this one's secured on you know, externally right here. This one's all internal. Uh, if you can see the screws right there inside. So, uh, you know, really, you know, as you know, if this was just a manual folder, it would already be um, a pretty awesome knife quite honestly. Um, but then you add in the fun factor of it being a dual action and it just makes it all the sweeter. Um, you know, even some of the details on the thumb studs, you get that kind of octagonal, uh, 3D octagonal domed uh, thumb stud. They're really, really comfortable. And because there's, uh, I mean, there is a detent, but it's pretty light. Uh, you could probably um, whip this blade out if you really wanted to. Yeah, see right there. Um, but that detent, because it's light enough, you know, there's no pressure on your thumb at all when you're, um, you know, when you're flipping that knife knife out. Um, actuating the lock's not overly comfortable, but it's not that uncomfortable either. Um, one thing that I did notice from Matt's uh, knives, you know, on the locks, both this one and the Vulcan. You know, there's a there's quite a bit of tension on that spring bar, but it's not again. It's not like overly uh, the tension's not overly hard where it's hard to actuate the lock. Ergonomics on this knife are uh, like absolutely phenomenal. Uh, again, as a slicer, I mean, I've used this knife uh, some. I don't carry it that much right now, but I think every time I do, I always enjoy carrying it. Um, it's just a, a fun knife to play with very practical slicer um, and again they you don't see many of them them out there um, the other thing I guess not like that big of a deal and I don't see why you would want to do it but like you can dry fire it without any issues and you hear that that loud click right there um, and that spring just engages or disengages and then all you need to do is just push it back and then it's fine and everything works perfect so this is you know this has probably been fired hundreds to a thousand times you know and um, perfectly centered in this in this knife one thing that you know really really um, I mean this is just like perfectly centered and you see how fine that edge is in the housing of the handle so um, you know you even have this kind of decorative pivot um, you know all around you know, so this knife, I'm really, really impressed uh, with Matt Diskin's work. Um, he also designs a number of knives, I think for like Kershaw is what I've seen. Um, but again, they're, they're pretty basic for the most part uh, from what I've seen. Um, just as a quick size comparison, uh, there's the Fellholter uh, FLG. Um, this is the Microtech LUDT, also a side opening automatic. Uh, this is a great, great knife that I haven't reviewed yet. Um, and then also kind of as a dress knife, which I kind of consider the, the fire to be, 
Um, you know, he's got a number of like polished, like super high polished blades that he's done. And again, you can almost see, it's not quite like Rockstead reflective, but um, he's got that really nice shine on that DLC coated LMAX. Um, so, you know, just in comparison to the JW Smith um, F5 flipper there, you can kind of see how it compares. It, it just looks really, really sharp. It's slim profile as well, which kind of just makes it sit in the pocket uh, really easily. So um, just overall, uh, this is, you know, this is one of those knives where I don't think I would ever get rid of it. Um, the price was right. Uh, the price on these seems like it's been going up. Um, but even then, regardless, I don't see myself selling it because it is a really fun uh, EDC carry. So anyway, that's a really quick uh, inter review of the Matt Diskin Fire. Uh, if you do get a chance, you know, and find it on the secondary market, don't pass it up because it's, yeah, like I said, it's a really fun knife. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next vid. Bye.